Welcome to a bunch of camo advice. For anyone still doing that. Check out the timestamps to find a certain challenge. I waited a bit for some more camo fixes to come and to make sure Shiphouse was sticking around long term. I know this will be too late for the most hardcore of you, and I don't expect to blow minds with most of these, but I still see requests for camo talk regardless, and you may take a few things from this, so here we go. First, gotta at least mention the biggest part of the camo grind, the weapon leveling. Only a basic overview since if you want more depth, well, half the Vanguard videos on this channel are breaking down weapon XP. There are plenty of valid ways to level weapons, like any respawn multiplayer mode, certain ways of playing zombies, plunder is alright, which we covered last time, you can still get some pretty impressive numbers with big game streaks, but the best weapon XP option for most people is gonna be small map multiplayer, as long as ship house or similar is around, and you don't mind playing that way, it's the go-to weapon grind mode. Some people even quit right before the match ends to skip the minute of nonsense you have to sit through, you don't have to bother, but yeah, not a bad idea for most people who don't care about their stats. Very frustratingly, there is that issue with gaining weapon XP too fast, resulting in being throttled or limited, it seems, by random, sometimes extreme amounts, which becomes much more obvious and a big problem with double XP and other stacking buffs, resulting in very ineffective double XP. It really sucks that sometimes something like Surplus or Clan Party Up or Operator Favorite or whatever can hurt instead of help. No need to be doing full retesting, but here I checked in on this double XP event, where I get one kill with one gun, and then the rest with another gun, to get a single kill value and an average. I saw some very oddly high single kill numbers at first before it started to go back to the old expected values, but the thing that matters is the full game average, and those were still quite low, varying between 0.9 XP and 1.6 XP, but certainly not a clean double. It's still very fast because it's shipment. Just gotta reiterate, I could accept a flat, consistent nerf to the XP per kill in the shiphouse playlist and maybe a buff for the base values if the goal were to make people not feel forced to play it or for the levels to not be too fast. But it's gotta be a flat rate because it's absurd to feel afraid of doing too well or to hardly care about double XP. Terrible. So that nonsense makes it nowhere near as good as it could be if it tracked properly, but still I guess it's better to be running into what seems like a weapon XP soft cap than to be falling short of it, so it is still typically the best option. I'll also mention I've seen many questions about zombies and that restarting method that became popular a bit ago, which I've never explicitly covered, wasn't sure who to credit for doing the research originally, but it's where you start a game, hop in an objective for 35-ish kills, then quit to do it all again, to be getting the highest XP per kill. Apparently it was also partially nerfed recently, but I still see some mixed opinions on that, like maybe some went up, some went down, I guess? Some people thought it got totally destroyed, but I think that's because they still thought their old XP tokens were working when they're not anymore. That's what got destroyed. Well, I didn't do the before measurements, I can't speak too much on it. Either way, I never found it to be that insane of a method for me solo when I tried it originally. Maybe because I personally don't want to be restarting constantly, but it seemed not far off the rates I looked into in the first Weapon XP video. Stuff like playing zombies in quads, even in an uncoordinated public game, and trying to hit all the zombies, go through the objectives quickly, that's always been decent XP. Whichever way you play it, the main strength of zombies is during double XP, it doesn't seem to suffer from that big throttling problem, or maybe it's below the threshold where it would run into that. So double XP can get the rate up there with small map multiplayer, but the thing is, if the multiplayer camos are your goal, and this goes for leveling and plunder too, I wouldn't want to go much past level 20 anyway, outside MP, depending on how confident you are in your skills, because you unlock the bloodthirsty challenge there, and I'd prefer to start making passive progress on that, so hopefully never have to stress about it later. Up to you, of course, how high you go outside MP. Now, let's go through and touch on every camo challenge I think will be most relevant in your journey to Atomic. Speaking of bloodthirsties at level 20, that's a good starting point. You need quite a few 5 kill streaks, 30 on nearly every gun. Thankfully, they unlock early, and there are many things to help you out. First being a thing I've mentioned before, unlike the past couple games, in Vanguard, all that matters is you get the 5th kill and the bloodthirsty pop-up with the weapon you want to get the credit. That means you can run overkill, get the first 4 kills with a weapon you're super comfortable with, and swap off to get the 5th kill with whatever weaker gun you're not a fan of. I'm glad that hasn't been changed, I like it working that way. It's not overly cheap, but it gives you a method to work on it if you're struggling. It also means you can mix in an equipment kill and not worry about counting kills, because when Bloodthirsty pops up, you know you're good. So it's helpful to run a 4 streak like a spy plane to remind yourself when you're nearly there. And if you're all about weapon progress, you may as well only be running support streaks anyway, or a specialist if they ever add that. And the overkill method doesn't just have to be about one good weapon and one bad, it can also just be nice to work on two guns at once, to avoid long reloads, like my double shotgun class. Oftentimes I get a few kills with the first gun, then swap and end up with a bloodthirsty on whatever my second weapon is, just have to swap the order I use them in to get the bloodthirsties on the other gun. Or here I was working on the combat shotgun attachment challenges for the first four kills, then giving the bloodthirsty to the revolving since it needed to catch up. 
Anything to convert some members of the Turtle Shield gang, right? Next, for the Bloodthirsties, if you tend to avoid shipment, but are struggling with the streaks, well, I know shipment may not seem like the choice for staying alive, but it really is the great skill equalizer, and I think even with snipers or whatever you're less comfortable with, Bloodthirsties could be more plentiful in Shiphouse than anywhere else. I think hardly anyone cares about staying alive in the grind playlist. It's a lot of rush into the action, number go up, or maybe that's what I see because that's how I play, but I find it to be a much more casual way to work on the streaks. Also because you have non-stop, no pressure opportunities. Building up a four kill streak can take 10 seconds, not a minute. Plus the absurd spawns will frequently throw kills your way. Just stick around the edges and keep your back to a wall to try to not be the one falling victim to being spawned behind. And the matchmaking should also be keeping you with people around your level, or give you a hand if you're struggling with a rough gun for too long. Finally, remember to pick between core and hardcore to play to the strengths of your gun, like how pistols are always super strong in hardcore. With some of the later attachments, they certainly hold their own in core too, but same thing with maybe some of the marksmen's or some higher damage SMGs. Of course, you die just as fast as you kill in hardcore. It isn't a miracle mode, and it's down to your preference, but it can help some weapons quite a bit. Ultimately, there's no foolproof advice I can give for stringing five kills together if you're struggling with those, but with all that stuff in this thoroughly unbalanced game, I believe you can get it done. They did at least fix the 100 Mosin Bloodthirsties, oddly now being 100 prone kills. I guess making it 30 might have broken something with people's existing progress. Well, alright then. The next big challenge are the long shots at level 30. You need a lot of those too. The main thing you want to do is make sure you're combining them with the 100 long shots you may need later as part of an attachment challenge. You can check this sheet, I'll link below again, my good old camo tracker, or just refer to this list. These are the guns where you should wait until later to start bothering with any long shots. Because I'd say they're the biggest thing that really disrupt your normal playstyle. Still, for the most part, getting them is pretty straightforward in Shiphouse, because Das House exists for this purpose. It is the new shoot house, and either in the side lane that runs the whole map, or the mid lane, you'll frequently find people on the other side looking for the same thing you are. Not every game there is luck involved, some games will suck, people will just be flanking with shotguns nonstop, or tossing explosions down mid nonstop, but some games will be god tier, where it's like the whole lobby wants long shots, I don't know why these guys keep coming back sometimes when I think they're using harder guns than the Bren, but thank you. Before going further, sniper long shots are an exception. Their long shot range is a bit over 50 meters, and that ain't gonna be working out on DOS House, so you have to actually play the game. I can show a little montage of where I went on different maps. Most maps have at least one place you can go to, but it may not be great for traffic or for getting more than one kill, so if this is your one and only goal, maybe not worth playing some of those maps if people aren't coming your way. If I could pick, I'd love to end up on some like Hotel Royal, it's just slightly bigger DOS House, simple three lane with this side here being a common spot. Gavutu is great with that super open sniper mid area, at least someone should be trying to snipe there. Demyansk is great, also very open, you can get on the rooftops or hang out in the back side area, and Dome is pretty good because it's high action and you can have fights back and forth on this outside spot. I'd recommend comboing in the held breath kills as well with those long shots, since I'd just be using a low zoom sight for every other challenge. Back to Das House for all the other long shots, deployable cover is often used, not a bad idea, and I haven't mentioned it until now because I thought they'd patch it just to add some extra height here, and they still might, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention the cheesy corner spot standing on a deployable cover to see over this stuff and down the lane. That also makes a long shot much more likely since it puts you further back. Yeah, it's not a secret, of course, good chance someone's doing that every game, and it's honestly not that OP. You can totally counter it from the other side if you know to spray through that very penetratable top bit where their head is. I'll gladly take that long shot if an enemy's doing that all game. It's only super OP when people don't know to pre-fire there, or if your weapon is just way better for long shots than theirs, and they keep stubbornly coming back to challenge you, which can happen, can get some easy bloodthirsties there too. Pretty cheesy, and it's a good option to keep in mind, but I would mix it up alternating with that and mid to get more action. For general loadout building, piercing vision is just too good when it comes to cutting through the smoke people often throw, and all the mess kicked up by streaks, thermite, the dark haze of the map. There is also the very World War II thermal scope, very solid to use when unlocked, but I don't see any need to be that guy and throw smoke of my own. There's enough of that crap already, and honestly I'd prefer people keep coming back to get some of their own long shots than to be scared away by the smoke. If they don't have thermal and you win every fight, they just won't come back. For other attachments, I'd optimize for recoil control. I really like the bipod, it's maybe underrated for this. You just have to crouch or mount for a big recoil reduction. And then you could maybe go for higher damage. It will depend on the weapon, something like the Bren. You can make into a two-shot tap shooting monster in core. Just never hold down fire or the recoil goes crazy. Or you could keep it as a three-shot laser. Can't go wrong with the Bren, love that thing. 
Many other weapons you'll be building around Hardcore, being a classic staple of long shots, lower the time to kill so you don't have to worry about controlling sustained recoil, annoying ass grenade spam can ruin a lot of games, so if the weapon can handle core, I'd try that first, but I'd say Hardcore is the go-to for stuff like SMGs, anything less designed for long range, or that has awkward kick. It's an unusual attachment, but I really enjoyed the burst mode barrel on the AS44 and the Sten. Do you need it though? Of course not. There are plenty of good combos out there, I think you get what makes sense on a gun for long range kills, and there's no one person perfect dancer. You don't need me to micromanage your build on every gun. Experiment. Have some fun. You're watching this video, so you're clearly very smart. I believe in you. Whenever a weapon is ready for its long shots, I set it up on a class as the priority to use on Das House, because then when shipment is up, I can be working on everything else. Shipment is also good for pistol long shots, because it's a pretty short range on those. They may just happen naturally in hardcore. Next, we'll jump to the Wildcat level 50 challenge, which varies with each weapon type, and I'm really only going to mention the LMG penetration kills. Well, thanks to piercing vision and the sheer number of bullet penetration boosting attachments you can stack on, this is pretty darn simple on both Shipment and Das House. You can spray through a lot of stuff. These angled crates into corners is a big one. And I will re-mention a mini tip from a previous video. This Jeep windshield, it never breaks. So if you find yourself in this corner, you can easily rack up those penetration kills. Even though it starts as transparent, you'll still want piercing vision, because before long, you won't be able to see anymore. Enjoy pretending you're a COD World War II Jeep camper for a bit, until the enemy team inevitably spawns all around you. For the final standard challenge, we got these three attachment challenges, which vary quite a bit. They've been getting on top of most of the bugs. It is annoying that you often can't start working on the level 60 challenge until you have a later attachment, but most of these are pretty easy. The type of stuff that happens naturally, you just have to do what it tells you to do. Headshots will require some focus if you want to get through that fast. Try to get some headshot boosting attachments on there if it isn't a restricted slot. And again, you can consider if hardcore would help or not. I think long shots are the only truly annoying one, so again, make sure to combo them together with the level 30 ones. Only the Bren needs two sets of long shots. Thankfully, it's a beast, so fine. The only other gray area I've run into is combining the shotgun ADS challenge with the long shot challenge. Like the Gracie Auto used to be busted beyond belief with Gung Ho Buck and Slug, so I never ADS'd and hardly ever got long shots. So it made sense to wait for the level 70 ADS challenge to then take it into hardcore and get some ADS long shots with slugs, working on both those challenges. Now let's move on to some of the specialty challenges, the launchers and melee, that you thankfully don't need to level. First, the Mark 11 long shots. There is no need to find special spots for this when Hardcore DOS House exists. My lord. This makes the game a bit of a nightmare, but if you can't beat them, join them. Just launch it down mid and get the long shots out of the way. There may be someone there going for their own long shots, or just running across off spawn. It's pretty absurd. I have no shortage of clips of this being way too effective. You can be done with those long shots in a handful of games. Maybe I was lucky. It definitely gets less effective if you do it too much in a game. Gotta just sprinkle it in or move on from it if people start avoiding the long shot lanes. One thing to watch out for, if you die before getting the kill, it seems like you don't get the long shot. Same thing for the throwing knife long shot challenge, on an unrelated note, where the strategy is, you guessed it, the narrow DOS house lane. Alright, bonus challenge tip. Yeah, fair enough, I guess. It needs you to be alive to calculate how far you are from the kill. I guess it doesn't remember where you launched or threw from, so that'll make some kills not count, but that should not be a big deal. The Mark 11 also needs triple kills, which you may get some of doing that, or on Blitz shipment, unsurprisingly. But like I've also said before, the same logic with the Bloodthirsties applies here, where you can get the first two kills with your primary or a grenade, and then the third kill with the Mark 11, and that'll count as a triple kill. You may not even need to resort to that, but it should make it go faster. As for the other launchers, the ground equipment will just take running engineer for a while, or if you notice someone using an ammo box, you can swap over. The airstreaks, I can just show more examples. You should develop a feel for it. There's no one perfect lineup since it will change with how close you are to the plane and what angle it's flying at. It is easiest after they've flown into the map, they'll tilt to the side and slow down. It is annoying how long they take to do that, so you only have time for a couple shots. I'd recommend starting with the Panzerschreck to help develop your feel for it, because the restricted box vision is actually really helpful because you can almost always line up the plane with the left side of that site. You just need to pick what seems correct vertically. Then you can transfer that same feel over to the bazooka. It's really not bad. The hitboxes are very forgiving. 
Then there's the Panzerfaust, which is a bit of a meme because it doesn't do a lot of vehicle damage and its air destroy challenge was also flat out bugged for a long time. A change to make it easier was on the Trello board for a long time and they finally did. They changed air destroy to long shots. Yay, easy. Except that the tracking on that was also broken and they didn't touch the infinitely worse challenge, three destroys in a game. The only reasonable way to do that is with the planes since dogs have never seemed to count for it. Although dogs are now highlighted by engineer in this update, which is is nice. Friendly dogs are also highlighted in red though, not nice. So I can't say if maybe it's changed and three dogs work now. They've always counted as ground equipment, I think, but not for the three streaks. Anyway, it looks like a bit of a tone deaf change to only hit that one challenge after all this time. Sad to say, instead of just buffing the launcher or knowing to change both. Maybe just make it the same as the Mark 11. Anyway, if they're committed to making it more reasonable, I assume this challenge will change too, eventually, or someone can comment if dogs or something works for it. For now, I may as well talk about shooting stuff down with the Panzerfaust, just in case, because it is possible. I figured I'd use my favorite tap shooting Bren, stacked on the damage barrel, 50 BMG, AP rounds, to bring it to 122 vehicle damage. Stacking on dismantle says it goes up to 183, but for some reason, with or without dismantle, it still takes me 6 bullets to take down a spy plane, and 8 to take down a counter spy plane. I don't know if there's a hard cap on vehicle damage, or something with the range drop off, or there's a dismantle bug, doesn't matter though. That means I can shoot a plane 5 times with that Bren setup, easy to remember, then a Panzerfaust rocket will take it out, or seven shots into a counter spy plane for the same thing. And you can use any other gun with decent bullet velocity and damage, it just needs to be strong enough for it to be reasonable to count the bullets. Because you can't just go off the plane smoking, it doesn't take a lot of damage to do that. It may not be enough for the Panzerfaust, you want a low health plane. For hitting the rocket, the feel you have from the others should come in some handy, but the hitbox does not seem very kind to it, and it doesn't fly quite as straight as the others, not terrible by COD standards, but yeah, it's possible, just a more annoying setup for sure. So I could even do an airstreak challenge, but the 3-in-1 game, ouch, we'll see what they end up doing with that, I think you'll want to keep waiting. At the very end, let's mention the shield. A note for this though, you could probably avoid the shield altogether now that they're releasing DLC melee weapons, just do one of those instead. I think that should work for diamond and atomic purposes, I can't try it on my account. But if you do want the shield camo, it's mostly nothing too crazy. The double kills, thanks to these small maps and fast pacing, are really not bad. But once again, you could do the get one kill with something else, like an equipment, another gun, then get the shield kill for the double kill to count. The worst one now is the 30 kills on stunned enemies. They have now fixed it, so you have to stun the enemy instead of stunning yourself for the shake it off, which actually kind of sucks. I think it was a lot easier to stun yourself with the dauntless perk on and burst around the corner to find a kill. Now, when you stun a room and hopefully tag someone, you're kind of letting them know you're coming and the shield is infamously not great at covering you in this game. It also went through some periods of not working at all. I went five solid games getting literally zero stun shield kills, only some stun grenade kills kills because it deals 20 damage. It was getting super frustrating just getting melted from every angle or not getting the stun. But then it started to get easier for some reason. I started getting three or four stun shield kills every game. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't abuse the matchmaking. Not only is that kind of gross, but also seems like a pretty stupid waste of time. I'm just playing the game as intended, going for a challenge like I often do, and it does what it does. Sometimes people say, wow, your lobby looks so easy. Well, first of all, I'm almost always just cherry picking a section where I did well to demonstrate something. Second, maybe that's because I'm never really playing that well. Most of the time I'm mindlessly walking around hip firing, paying very little attention. Not to trick the game, that's just how I play most of the time. I'm not even that good at my best, but I don't feel this game is designed for taking seriously. Anyway, if you are struggling with something like the shield, you should probably stick with it. Commit to the struggle and get it done. Don't mix in a shield game, suffer, and then go right back to normal gameplay. Those are the standout camo challenges I wanted to discuss. Mostly a bunch of tips I've already had scattered around in videos, but here they are collected in one place with a bunch more example clips and some extra thoughts and ideas on the camo hunt. For anyone who is asking for some dedicated camo coverage, hopefully you can take something from this. I know I didn't cover literally every challenge, I think the early ones should complete themselves, and many of them will take time, but I don't have anything to say about them to speed that up, or I haven't ran into issues with them personally, and I can only really speak from my experience. So if you've had some different experiences, and have some tips you want to share, by all means leave a comment. I am but one man, I do not know all the tips. Most important advice, spend some time with your family, and well, be careful out there. Best of luck with your atomic journey if you're going for it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.